A red dwarf, half the mass of the sun, is coming towards us. We are screwed. What would happen if the Earth got kicked out of the solar system? There's only one way to find it. Let me show you real quick. Oh my god, I almost broke my neck. Yo guys, what is up this video? I'm right, what if the Earth got kicked out of the solar system by, of course, Kirks. I mean, of course, you know, plus I could do it. I could kick the Earth out of its uh, solar system. Stop the cap. What would happen? So we'll find out as watching the video, all right? Three, two, one, let's get it. The night sky seems peaceful and orderly. Nah, but in reality, stars are careening through the galaxy at speeds of hundreds really? of thousands of kilometers per hour. Well Not bound by static formations, but changing neighborhoods constantly. Fortunately, space is big, and so the stars of the Milky Way are very unlikely to hit us. Unfortunately, they don't have to hit anything to make us have a really bad time on Earth. <laughs> and there are already stars starting to get very close. Stars are coming close to us. Stars, not even planets, stars. To understand how dangerous stars are to us, we need to talk about gravity. Gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe. You are attracted by an atom a million light years away and vice versa. Luckily, this force gets weaker over distance, Thank and God. it also depends on how massive something is. Like, imagine if, like, gravity didn't get weaker. Which way would we move? Would we move to the sun because it's dense and there's more gravity? I don't... I, don't, you pro, I mean, of course. I mean, but actually, if it didn't decrease, then probably, like, some dwarf star, because I bet... Actually, a, a black hole. I'm stupid as hell. Oh, my God. So things that are close and are very massive are more attractive, winning the cosmic tug of war. I'm more attractive. This way, so massive like things define how smaller things behave around them. The makes sun sense. makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, and so it shapes the behavior and orbits of everything yeah. else in it. Billions of years ago, after the sun was born, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place as the planets were formed from countless little pieces that collided constantly. But over the eons, a stable balance emerged. Thank Today, God. most Much planets and asteroids have settled into safe and predictable orbits. We have the inner and outer planets, the asteroid and Kuiper belt, and at the edge, the Oort cloud, a giant sphere of comets orbiting slowly in cold storage. We really don't want this balance to be disturbed. If another star came to <sighs> would pull on everything in the solar system like a spoiled toddler. Messing up the peasant <laughs> order of the planets and asteroids and Let's comets. Let's hope something never happens. This isn't some imaginary danger. Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf, brown dwarf binary system passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. It might even have sent a deadly onslaught of asteroids our way. But it could take two million years until those visitors from ah, the Oort cloud arrive in the future, inner future, solar future, system. Future problem. I, I, but there's I'm a much a bigger problem on the future. horizon. Gliese 710, what? a red dwarf with about half the mass of the sun, is currently headed towards the solar system. In about a... A red dwarf, half the mass of the sun, is coming towards us. We are screwed. In a million years, it'll pass through the Oort cloud and become oh, the brightest years. star in the night sky. That's, that's the time a now. close flyby like this would unfold over hundreds of thousands of years, disrupting the orbits of millions of objects in the Oort cloud considerably. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early solar system. The night sky could be filled with comets and asteroids raining down on the inner solar system. Well, that's the not larger good. ones could cause dinosaur-level mass extinctions and would be bad for the stock market. But it could get bad much the worse. Market. The galaxy is an intense place, and stars get close to each other regularly. So it is possible that a star could come much closer and not just pass us, but fly directly through the inner solar system. This would be very bad in the extreme. That would be horrible. 
The chance of another star colliding with the sun is astronomically unlikely, but that isn't Good. what we're worried about. If another star were to pass by about as close as the Earth is from the sun, it could easily eject the Earth from the solar system. The odds of such an event are estimated to be around 1 in 100,000 in the next 5 billion years. Small, but not absurdly so. As we discussed in another video, okay, wait, wait, there seem to be safe. billions of rogue planets doing their own thing in the galaxy, and this is one way to make them. So if this were to happen with an average red dwarf, what would happen on Earth? Okay. Kicking Earth out of the solar system. The star enters the solar system, a small orangish dot appears in the sky that grows bigger and bigger for months, eventually becoming visible during the day. It would get bigger and much brighter than the moon. Too right. bright to look at directly. The night sky would be filled with an eerie red glow. After a few months, it would we'll start dead. shrinking again. Oh. But so would the sun. Over a few years, the sun slowly grows smaller in the sky. All around the world, as the days turn dark, the final winter of humanity would begin. The polar ice caps begin to grow so and no, spread, while plants it just put, shrivel and die. Away. Forests freeze and animals die in droves. Oh. As the Earth passes the orbit of Mars, the average surface temperature has plummeted to near minus 50 degrees Celsius. From space, Earth begins to look like an icy moon, yeah, we'll, the blue-green we'll surface that. becoming the pale grey-white of death. As global infrastructure breaks down, people huddle together indoors, burning what they can for warmth as the temperature continues to drop, counting the days until they'll be out of food which no longer grows. Everybody oh, yeah. living at the surface is Man's living on borrowed rats. time. Rats. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, surface temperatures sink to minus 150 degrees Celsius, yeah, we're dead. lower than the coldest ever recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Yeah. Needless to say, by now, almost everyone is dead. Yeah. Without the energy from sunlight to evaporate water, clouds don't form and the water cycle stops. The polar ice caps eventually touch at the equator and the oceans become covered in a thick layer of ice. As more and more of its heat leaks out, more water freezes onto the bottom of the ice sheet. The concentration of salt in the deep ocean grows, poisoning most animals that survived here. <laughs> so the animals dead as well. Although around all hydrothermal all vents, all communities of extremophiles might adapt even to these circumstances. Okay, Deep below today. the surface, Minus some bacteria would not notice much of any of this, as they're still kept warm by the radioactive decay of elements in the Earth's oh, core. Oh, yep. As the Earth reaches the orbit of Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun is still the brightest star in the sky, but it's one among many, with stars now visible during the day. The well, temperature then. is now barely 40 degrees Celsius above absolute zero, below the freezing temperature of the gases in the atmosphere. Minus 239. Let me tell you something. You wouldn't be alive past uh, 140. So imagine 239. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, it needs to say, if you got kicked out of the freaking solar system, we'll be, we'll be screwed. If you didn't know that, I, I mean, you're kind of stupid. A weird spectacle, enjoyed by no one, unfortunately, unfolds as the atmosphere turns into nitrogen and then oxygen snow. Over a few years, kind of it's deposited we won't into be able to see it, though, a 10-meter sheet all over the planet's surface, with only a thin whisper of gas remaining. The frozen corpses of flora and fauna are buried beneath them. As Earth leaves the solar system, it becomes a rogue planet, traveling alone through the dark, Aww. lifeless and in solitude. But Poor weirdly Earth. enough, there is hope. <laughs> Humanity would not be surprised by this potential extinction event, we'd notice it thousands of years in advance. There's not a lot we could do Master to stop heat. a star, but we could prepare. Most of us would perish, but a few million could survive in huge artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy, possibly okay. even fusion if we can learn to use the ice around us for power. Here, humanity might survive for hundreds of thousands of years. Hey. At some point, we would become used to our circumstances and new generations would watch documentaries in disbelief about the time we had our own star and could walk <laughs> the surface of Earth. Like, mm, wow. And at some point, our we own, might like, decide to look for together. another home. That was so weird. If the Earth were lucky enough to pass by another star with a habitable planet, we could try to make a fresh start. <laughs> Space flight, oddly enough, would become very easy without the atmosphere in the way. 
so it's not unthinkable that the last survivors would leave Earth behind and try again on a new planet around a new star. Exactly. Maybe one day, thousands of years later, the descendants of humanity will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. <laughs> Stories so of weird, our lost you know. home, of a mysterious icy planet floating alone and empty through the dark of space. Sad ending, man. So basically, the key to humanity's survival is learning about what we'll be dealing with. Mm. Well, we'd better get cracking then. Our friends from Brilliant are the perfect coaches on the way to. All right, guys. Um, I mean, I mean, did you expect anything else? Um, of course, if the Earth moved away from the freaking solar system, then we all be screwed. I don't know if you knew that, but if you did, you're average-minded. I, I... But that was a great informative video. I, I'm not gonna lie. My brain IQ is probably increased by around pff, at least at least five. So. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.